Hey everyone, welcome back to the Meta Analysis Academy. We have an amazing video for you today explaining the 10 most common mistakes that students, authors make when submitting an abstract to a conference, to a national or international conference. This collection of common mistakes, I put it together by just having extensive experience in reviewing the abstracts of students, of colleagues, and of the learners in the Meta Analysis Academy. So I want to spare you the trouble, the mistakes when writing your own abstracts. We're going to divide this video in two parts. In today's video, I'm going to explain the five first mistakes and then we're going to talk about the other five in another video. So before we dive right into it, you know, the Meta Analysis Academy, as you know, is not affiliated with the institutions where I currently work. The opinions here are my own. And if you're new to the channel over here, we talk about research, publication, systematic reviews, meta analysis, and the medical career. So if you're interested in learning all about these topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and don't miss out on any of our future videos. Let's get right into it. Mistake number one missing units for continuous outcomes. So when you do a binary endpoint like myocardial infarction, like stroke, for example, the measure of association doesn't have any units. It's an odds ratio or relative risk. So it's a ratio and it doesn't have any units. But when you do continuous outcomes like weight loss, length of stay, urinary output, these continuous outcomes their measure, the measure of association is typically mean difference. And there are units into mean differences. You have to add the units. So here's a very practical example in an abstract that I corrected recently of one of our students that was submitting, submitting the abstract to a, a global conference. The outcome here was blood pressure. So the mean difference was a reduction in 3.2 millimeters of mercury with a confidence interval between 5.3 and 1.04. But you can see in red here, the student had originally missed adding the unit for blood pressure, which is millimeters of mercury. So you can't do that. Make sure to add the units to your continuous outcomes. Mistake number two, the figures are missing in formative titles. So when you put your forest plot in your meta-analysis, again, we're talking mostly about meta-analysis here. When you put your forest plots, the titles have to tell the whole story. You can't just say stroke, for example, in the title of the forest plot. You have to tell the whole story. You have to say, among patients with whatever the condition is, whatever the population is, treatment with medication A was associated with a reduction in the incidence of stroke as compared with medication B. You may even put the in, in parentheses the p-value in the title. The title has to have information on what is the intervention group, what is the control group, was there statistical significance, what was the results, and even potentially the population. Let's look at the example here. Again, this is a real example from one of the students in the Meta Analysis Academy submitted the abstract to our team to help correct the abstract and give feedback on that. And then the title said, figure 1A, medication adherence. Well, that's not good enough. So we suggested medication adherence was significantly increased in patients treated with the intervention as compared with the control group. This is a much more holistic title that will help your abstract get accepted into uh, an important conference. All right, another mistake related to the number of figures. Some conferences will allow you to submit one figure. And then I've previously taught our students that you can get around this limitation by making uh, subdivisions. So you could do figure 1A and figure 1B. This allows you to submit two figures for the price of one because you're actually submitting just one figure in the portal but in reality you have two figures hidden in there figure 1a and figure 1b but you can't overdo this technique you can't submit figure 1a 1b 1c 1d you can't put three or four forest plots in an abstract just pick the most relevant ones okay so keep it at one or two figures for the abstract no more than that mistake number four in your abstract would be to start sentences with numerals by the way this is also common when writing the paper all these things that i'm telling you obviously also apply to manuscripts so 
For example, a student started a, a sentence saying 1,421 allergenic transplants were performed. Instead of writing it like that, why don't you say there were 1,421 allergenic transplants? It's a much better way of saying it. You avoid starting the sentence with a numeral in this case. And then mistake number five is an introduction that's too long. You know, the abstract has to be concise. Not only do you have to fall within the number of words or characters that the conference specifies, but this has to be distributed proportionally. You have to have more results than anything else. Your introduction has to be short. Your conclusion has to be direct to the point. So a common mistake I see is a very long introduction and then the results are like tiny or methods are tiny. The introduction should just be two or three sentences, no more than four lines of text. And it should say briefly about the controversy involving the topic. Like what's the uncertainty around this topic? Why is it that you're doing a systematic review and meta-analysis on this? So don't overdo your introduction. Don't talk about things that even though may be relevant to the topic in general, they may not belong in the introduction. Again, keep it very short, very direct to the point. Now, there are many more mistakes that students make when writing their abstracts. There will be a part two of this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button so you don't miss part two and other videos that are really relevant for research, publications, meta-analysis, and of course, your career as a whole. See you later.